Get yourself ready for the most comprehensive tutorial that exists online on Dolly 2. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced art creator, content creator, you're gonna learn something in this video. Enjoy. So when you open the Dolly interface, it asks you to go ahead and input a prompt and it's gonna turn that text into an image. It's gonna generate it with its AI brain. So let's try something out. Let's ask it to create a real picture of an angry gorilla eating the planet Mars while a monkey watches in the distance. So let's see what its AI brain is able to come up with. This is actually quite incredible. Here you can see that in some of these images, it completely neglected one of the things I asked for, which was a monkey watching in the distance. However, in some of them, like this one, it gave me the exact thing that I wanted. Now, one of the things you can do when Dolly goes ahead and generates four images for you is you can select an image that's closest to what you're looking for. So let's say this one. And from here, you can either download the image, but you can also edit the image, which will play around with the edit feature later. But what I wanna show you right now is the variations. If you click on an image and click on variations, it will go ahead and create four more variations of that original image, and you can select from those which one you feel is a better fit. And from there, you can further ask it to create even more variations, or you can go to edit it, you can share it, you can save it, and now I wanna jump in and point out what these are, create collections, favorites. So if we go ahead and we select favorites here, there's two options right here in the top left where it says history and collections. If you click collections, you will see that you can actually create collections or you can just mark certain ones as favorites and you'll be able to access them here. And history shows you all of the ones that you have searched for and used credits on. And when I refer to credits, you get a certain amount of credits per month to use for free. And if you run out of those credits, after that, you will have to pay for credits. So for instance, for me to generate this one prompt, which was a sloth playing chess against a rabbit, it wasn't charging me four credits because there's four images. It was only charging me one credit when it produced these four images. But if I asked it to further create a variation on this, it would then charge me another credit. And now I wanna show you guys when I played around with its brain and its capabilities, what I actually got and wanna point out certain things. It seems like a lot of times it outputs very raw stuff and it's not exactly specific to what I'm asking. Since I know that OpenAI created ChatGPT, I know that it understands that I'm asking for a sloth playing chess against the rabbit but in all four of these images it gave me a rabbit playing a rabbit and it also gave me a chessboard and pieces that don't really fit the criteria of what chess and pieces look like like for instance here it looks like Gary Kasparov is playing a rabbit in chess but they're playing for like peanuts or something like that here it doesn't even look like a chessboard it looks like a completely different game and this rabbit looks very very frazzled in this image here, Gary Kasparov starts to look like some version of Mr. Bean. And in this one, he turns into the penguin. When I asked for it to produce a painting of a monkey playing chess, it also gave me something that's really abstract and this isn't really a chessboard and none of the pieces really mimic any pieces that are on a chessboard. When I went ahead and asked for it to give me a car talking to a monkey, it went ahead and got pretty creative and I actually appreciated some of it. But this part alarmed me. A lot of these images, they have that cartoonist bubble for a quote, or even right here, you could see that it looks like a signature. And this is problematic to me because it's clear that it's learning from using other people's artwork that actually exists. So it may actually be using other people's art, copyrighted art from let's say The New Yorker, all the cartoonists that work for The New Yorker and create amazing art and put all that work, Dolly might have scanned all that and now it's spinning out its own variations of it. And so Dolly has received criticism 
criticism for some of this, especially where you could see that there's clear signatures. It means it's learning from people's unique art. Now, when I asked for it to do something simple, like a bowl of mice, it actually went ahead and did it pretty well. And some of these look like real life mice. When I asked for it to output a Picasso painting of a homeless man, it did a phenomenal job. And this I actually appreciated a lot because again, Dream by Wombo doesn't do this type of stuff. It doesn't give realistic photographs. And sometimes that's what you want. You want something that's more of a realistic photograph. Like these two right here, this looks like slightly edited Photoshop versions of an actual homeless man laughing. So it did a great job here. In this example, I asked for it to give me the country of France being 3D printed and it did a pretty accurate job. Like if I was making a video about 3D printing and I wanted to 3D print the country of France, I could use this as a cover photo. However, I was really, really alarmed by some of the other stuff at output. For instance, I have a lot of clients that are chiropractors, orthopedic surgeons, and for them I create Google posts. And this was really alarming to me because I input a prompt that said a chiropractor adjusting a patient and it produced what looks like a chiropractor choking out a patient. And this one was even more inappropriate. I will let you guys figure out what the heck is going on here, but this is a little bit alarming and clearly not what I'm asking for. And it actually didn't do a good job with any one of these. I mean, this is not how a chiropractor adjusts a patient. And it also looks like this chiropractor's hands are very deformed. And that's actually something I've noticed in these programs altogether is they have trouble with hands. The hands a lot of times are severely messed up or there's more fingers or less fingers than there needs to be. Sometimes there's extra thumbs. Sometimes if there is five fingers, three of them are thumbs. And for the last example, I wanted to use common speech and see if Dolly is intelligent enough to output exactly what I'm looking for. So I said a dentist messing up a donkey's teeth. So you would imagine it's like a dentist ripping out a tooth of a donkey or really deforming the donkey's teeth. Whereas here, when I said that, it outputs something like this, a dentist messing up a donkey's teeth, this is a person. So this isn't something that I was looking for and this person actually looks like they have really, really good teeth that are in good shape. So clearly it is not understanding what I'm asking for. Here's a female dentist and also she's not messing up a donkey's teeth and here is just a dentist working maybe on a donkey's teeth. These teeth look better than mine so this is not very accurate to the prompt that I asked for. However, I want to point out that if I paid an artist to go ahead and create an artwork like this for me, this would take them a very long time and I would have to pay them a bunch of money to commission them to create something like this. So the fact that Dolly can figure out and dissect this sentence right here, which is a doozy of a sentence, is impressive, but I believe this is in its very raw stages and it's not yet ready to be a commercial product that a lot of people can use to go ahead and create certain art or use it for their business. It's just not ready to be that yet. However, for some prompts, it was extremely impressively accurate. Anything where you say a Picasso painting of and you give a simple prompt, it gives really, really impressive artwork. And I need you guys to realize this happens in seconds flat. This is pretty wild. This AI brain doesn't even have to think for a long time. It just spits it out. It creates it very, very quickly. Very impressive stuff, but also not quite there. And if this was a prayed product, me as someone that's a content creator, as someone that is an enthusiast of art, that creates art, someone that has a lot of clients that need a lot of things for marketing and YouTube covers and blog post covers, I am not ready to go ahead and spend my own money to purchase a subscription in Dolly or buy more credits. Now I wanna show you guys the edit feature in Dolly. In order to access the editor function, you click on any image, you'll click these three dots here and you'll see an option to edit image. So this square, it's called a frame. So one of the first things we can do is if we select and drag, then we can select and drag this frame. And if you look here, this is pan. And with pan shortcut P, you can basically just click and drag around and you will be able to move your work plane to wherever you see fit. This minus and plus, it's to zoom in 
and it's to zoom out. So now that we got a hang of that, let's take a look at what add generation frame does. So if I go ahead and I click add generation frame, and then I release it, I can actually type in something new. So let's say a Dilophosaurus at an EDM concert. And if I click generate, you will see that not only did it generate the image, but we have a chance to scroll through. And if you scroll all four of these, you can see that there's different various types of this image. And what is truly amazing is they're fused together by Dolly. These images look like they are one once we choose the correct one. And so let's say we want to keep this one, we would hit accept. And now let's say we want to add yet another frame right here. And this one's going to be a turtle flirting with a mermaid. We'll click generate. And so this is a little bit troublesome because again, it looks like it is borrowing from some copyrighted art in order to create this. That's why we have the name here and the bird. But if we scroll to the left, we can go ahead and choose something that's close. So this is actually a turtle. He's not really flirting with the mermaid or maybe she turned him down and he can no longer carry a conversation with her. And so if we click the pan and we move around, we can see that these fusions are coming out quite nicely. Now, aside from that, I want to point out this eraser tool. So with this eraser tool, what you can do is you can erase a part of an image and it will fill it in. You can think of it for you Photoshop people as basically a fill in tool content aware. So let's say over here, I erase her arm and her face. Let's see what happens. And so as you can see, it manipulated this. Now it's not doing the greatest job, although this is an okay one. I actually like this one. This looks like the turtle said something wholly inappropriate to her and she's like, oh my God. So this one I'm gonna accept. And now I'm gonna add a generation frame, let's say right here. And I'm gonna click on upload image. You could see here that I can actually resize it and I could toggle it back and forth. This is actually a real life capture that I took on a road trip. And I believe this is in Richmond, Virginia. So we're gonna place this here and we're gonna click check and see what happens. Okay, so it seems to have added it. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the generation frame right here in between all of these. And now I'm gonna type in a caterpillar dancing in the sky and I'm gonna click generate. So I'm actually pretty impressed with how flawlessly it's fusing these together. Now, again, it's not reading all of my commands correctly. However, it's fusing these really, really nicely. And remember, every single time you do it, you have a choice of four to choose from. So I think this one looks the nicest and it has the nicest color scheme. And also remember that I'm not putting in a lot of direction. I'm only just using a couple of words. With Dolly, don't shortchange it. Put in as much direction as you want. Talk about colors, sizes, all that jazz. This is actually giving me a little bit of nostalgia because piecing artwork together like this, it reminds me of my grandfather. When I was a kid, he would collect stamps and he would show me his collections and he would have sheets of souvenir sheets, which in stamp terms is when the stamps are on one sheet and there's this amazing cut out artwork and there's about six to 10 stamps and they're perforated so you can go ahead and separate them. But usually collectors, they just leave it as a souvenir sheet and it's so freaking cool that this program does something like this. Again, I wanted to show you guys this because it's a combination of the artwork that was generated by Dolly and also artwork that was captured by me and then edited on Photoshop and it's blending it seamlessly. The last thing I want to point out is the feature where you can upload an image and edit certain features of it. So for example, I'm going to use my girlfriend's cat. And as you can see, currently it seems like Dolly 2 only prefers square images, so one to one ratio. And what I want to show you is that you can go ahead and erase parts of your image and have a prompt there. So for instance, I can say a cat with purple eyes, click generate. So as you can see in some of these images, it actually did a great job turning the eyes purple. And in other images, it just looks like the cat has pink eye and needs to be taken to the vet immediately. So using Dolly 2 and then using some of the other AI art programs that I will definitely create some tutorials on as well. 
The pros that I see with Dolly 2 is that it's user friendly, it's accurate, and it's quite quick. It's not copyrighted images, so you can use them for personal and commercial use. And there are plenty of free credits that you get. For every account that you create, you get 50 credits. If you wanna buy additional credits, it's gonna cost you $15 for 115 credits. So it's also relatively cheap. It has really great realistic images relative to something like Dream by Wombo. And I have to say, there are some cons. So it is not the most accurate, although ChatGPT is also created by OpenAI. So it understands language really, really well. It takes direction, but it's not very accurate when editing the actual photos. Uh, but that's kind of okay because it's still in the beta version. Now, some of the annoying things are is that it doesn't allow for anything with celebs. So if you type in Taylor Swift or Brad Pitt or Joe Biden, it just says that it goes against their policies and you can't really create art using somebody famous unless it's like a historical figure and I find that really really annoying something like Dream by Wombo does have that and when I go ahead and create tutorials and review other platforms I'm gonna make sure to stay on top of that because a lot of content creation it involves famous people and so again remember this platform is still new it is definitely gonna evolve the future iterations of it are probably going to be very impressive. ChatGPT is as impressive as it gets as far as an AI language model goes. And so I believe that the team really knows what they're doing. So keep your eyes on Dolly 2 because it might end up being the premier AI art platform that's out there. But let's see what happens. Plenty of tutorials coming your way on all of these different artificial intelligence software platforms that we're all being gifted and are able to use for free for now who knows how much this is going to cost in the future because i think that big businesses and governments and a lot of content creators a lot of professionals are going to be using this and integrating it into their business models and when everyone starts using it you better bet that these companies that are for profit are going to go ahead and hike up the rates but with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed the video stick around for future videos i appreciate you guys cheers